Hello and welcome to Gibraltar. We have a lovely calm anchorage here and behind us, the rock. Happy, happy. Yes, we had a lovely sail in too. We had uh, following wind for once. Uh, it was really, really good. And you've got this view of Spain on one side and Africa on the other and the rock in front of you. It doesn't get better than that, really. So we've been sightseeing. I hope you enjoy this film. Coming up, dancing in the streets in the historic town of Cadiz. A spectacular sail through the Straits of Gibraltar. And keeping a lookout, the monkeys still the main tourist attraction for visitors to the rock. The okay, plan this morning was to get the uh, ferry across to Cadiz, so we were going to go into the marina, which is somewhere over there. But as you can see, you can't actually see anything at the moment, so I don't think we'll be doing that. Looks like these guys here are fishing, so maybe that's the thing to do instead. All swimming. It cleared up a bit, so we took the dinghy to the beach, but it was really cold. Maybe tomorrow. The next day was sunny and bright, so we brought Feral into Rota Marina for the night and caught the ferry. She'll be fine. There are other ways to get across the bay, but we settled for the slow boat. And then we met a smiley face, or two. Cadiz is a bit touristy, but still very pretty and very Spanish. Okay, so this is probably for the tourists, but they're good, aren't they? You don't get buskers like this very often. The center point of Cadiz is the cathedral. It's impressive. It was built during the 18th century and you can see how it developed with numerous separate chapels. There's a fee to get in and for that you get a handset which in my case had a cheery English voice. I'm being welcomed. <laughs> which explains exactly what the different sections show. So this is the Custodia de Corpus Christi. It's solid silver and it's five and a half metres high. Wow. But the real architectural achievement lies in the basement, a crypt built under sea level. And when we got back to the marina, a magnificent sunset. The next stop on our journey is Babate. We had a good breeze and some history. So we're heading east now. Uh, it's a lovely sunny day, blue skies. We've got about uh, 15 knots of breeze across the decks, um, just running, running with the wind. I did have the, uh, the main out on a preventer to start with without the uh, Yankee, um, but even with the preventer on, it's banging around a little bit. And you get in this bit of roll. It's really because of this, um, it's not a big swell, but it's the period. It's probably about three seconds. It's quite short and it's coming through and making things a little bit rolly. So we're a little bit better off with uh, the Yankee pulled out and we're doing quite nicely now, five knots downwind. We're approaching a little bit of uh, uh, water here, which is quite famous. Anyone that's been to London and been to uh, Trafalgar Square will know Nelson's Column's in the middle. Probably a lot of Londoners wouldn't know though that uh, the bit of water that that's talking about, Trafalgar, is there. That is Cape Trafalgar. So that's where uh, Lord Nelson came down with uh, his fleet and uh, I think it was a joint Spanish and French uh, armada there at the time and he went through the middle, did a different tactics to normal and uh, 
and won that battle which was sort of ahead of the uh, the Armada, the Spanish Armada coming into England. So it sort of it, it did. Uh, it was a good battle to win for him, uh, though not that good because he died. Uh, that is the one where he got shot by uh, a French musketeer and, uh, and and died that night. So somewhere around there, it would have been the Kiss Me Hardy moment. We arrived in the evening and found an anchoring spot by the very popular beach. The party was still going on by the time we went to bed. Well, it's a lovely morning here in Babate. The sun's out, there's a little bit of breeze, so we might get some good sailing today. It's just looking really lovely, nice and uh, still. Good anchorage, Judy's getting the early morning uh, sun, the first rays. Yeah, me and a few people on the beach. It was packed last night, absolutely packed. I've never seen anything like it, but now it's just me and a few, early morning. So yeah, it's good and it's going to be a good uh, trip for us. Hopefully, we're, this is where we're going. Uh, so quite exciting to go through the uh, Straits of Gibraltar. Um, we're going to have to look out for the, the uh, currents and things. It's the right time for us to leave now, sort of half past 10 to, uh, to get the best of the, the currents going in. So we'll, uh, we'll get the anchor up. Uh, anchor ball needs to come down and um, get on our way. Good. Anchoring is so much easier with a windlass. Ours is hydraulic, so it doesn't use our battery power, which is great because we always go down to about 60% on our house bank after a night at anchor. But with the engine on to get us out of the harbour, the alternator is putting a lot of power back in before the solar takes over. There are quite a few tankers on our way out to sea, but don't worry, these are anchored. Soon we're on our way and poling out the Yankee. A lovely bright day, so time to relax and sail. So we're slowly making our way down the coast. Uh, the reason we timed our uh, exit for 10 o'clock was that we're trying to catch uh, the best of the, the tide through uh, the Straits of Gibraltar. It's not much of an issue going east because well, the tide runs that way almost all the time. It's, it's because it's not really that tide dependent. It's, uh, it's mainly due to the evaporation from uh, the Med, just water from the Med and it filling up from the Atlantic. Uh, but the tide does make a, a little bit of a difference and uh, there's springs at the moment so it should help us if we get the timing right. At the moment we're, we're just an hour and a half before so it's going our way and it'll stay that way until five hours after high tide. So that's uh, six o'clock our time. The, uh, the GPS has us coming in a bit after that, seven or eight, but we're going quite slowly at the moment. There's not a lot of wind. I'm pretty confident going by the forecast uh, and by the, the statistics from the table here, um, because this is where we're going. And around Tarifa, uh, it says uh, in the pilot book here that they record over 30 knots of wind on 300 days a year. So we're pretty confident of getting a uh, a good westerly breeze through there and the speed picking up. So true to form, winds come up quite nicely. We're still just on uh, the headsail, but straight down wind, so we're pulled out. And we're doing seven knots, so we can't complain about that. In the sunshine here, Judy's doing her Spanish. Um, two bebes agua. Two bebes agua. Water? Babies like water? No. No, okay. I'm learning Spanish. All right. So 
sailing now through the Straits of Gibraltar. It is the best sailing day ever. Over there is Spain, wonderful. But over here, that's Africa, amazing. This is quite a busy place to come into. It's a staging post for tankers waiting to get into the Med. Fortunately, most of them are anchored, so it's just a matter of weaving through. British waters are quite distinct, inside the purple line. Our anchorage is just outside, so technically it's part of La Linea Marina. But we get an excellent view of the rock from here. I can't wait to go sightseeing. We made this trip several times during our stay here, so you'll see my t-shirt change colour. Where we're anchored is actually in Spain, so in order to get into Gibraltar we have to cross the border, and that's where we're going now. Here is the red one, and now it turns to green. I just thought I'd mention that. It's an amazing view from the top of the cable car and the monkeys are obviously used to having the tourists here. <laughs> Climbing right to the top is another stretch. Hello, well done for getting up there first. I'll make it. <laughs> this is possibly the oldest lookout, dated back to the 12th century. And this is the Windsor Suspension Bridge a gift for photographers and remarkably unscary. I'm usually a little bit wary of suspension bridges because I don't like heights. This is a little bit wobbly, but look at the view. We struggle to find the bridge because it's not on the main tourist path, but it was worth the walk. And as the sign shows, seven and a half double-decker buses in length. Why do we measure things in buses? It's very British. The trail took us here, siege tunnels dating back to the 18th century. The exhibition is frighteningly realistic. <laughs> <laughs> so whose is it? It's I him. I that big man there. Halt! Who goes there? <laughs> There are 34 miles of tunnels. No surprise then that since they were built, Gibraltar has never been successfully invaded. Back to the monkeys. They are in fact Barbary apes and the only wild primates in Europe. Gibraltarians originally thought they came up through the caves from Africa 
and when you go into the caves, you can see why. St Michael's Cave is an amazing grotto of stalagmites and stalactites. I did not expect this. They even hold concerts here, which I'm sure are amazing and very atmospheric. big ships in the mist. The mist here is called the Levanta and it comes occasionally in the early morning. When it cleared, we got back to business. Okay, Steve, so what are you doing? Filling up all the tanks. We were completely empty, which is good because I think this is probably the cheapest diesel that there is anywhere in the world. It's about 65 pence a litre, and the marina fees are a good price too. 28 pounds a night for Fair Isle, and she's 17 metres long. found a pub with a view, much more importantly than that, proper beer, well not real out, but as close to proper beer as you're going to get. So we decided to come in for a night and go out on the town. No, we didn't go in there, but we did drop in on a local couple who've lived in Gibraltar for 12 years. There's so many good people in the marina, if, if you get a problem, you will, won't some. have a, any trouble with finding somebody that will either help you fix it or they give you the information to help you fix it. You know, we're all such a big family here. <laughs> Would you recommend this lifestyle? I'd definitely say it's a good place yeah. to come. I mean, you, everything is on hand, everything's so close. You've got, got chandlers around the corner, you've got. Yeah. Everything's at your disposal here. It's so relaxed here. And, it is really, you yeah. Know, People if you're get a good person trouble. and you just get on with your work and stuff, everybody just gets on with each other. It's multicultural. People from all around the world and there's no nastiness mm. from anybody. With neighbours like that, we decided to stay for another night. Yes, we had a lovely couple of nights uh, in the marina there. It is a really nice marina, but we like anchoring, and this anchorage here is just superb. It's, uh, it's one of the few sheltered spots along this coast, and you've got that fantastic view, so you know, we like it here, don't we? Yeah, we do, and we're told that further down into the Med, it's going to be a little bit more rocky, but we'll do our best. We've had a few rocky nights, so oh, I think we we'll have be on right. the way down. Yeah, there's no shelter on the costas. Unless there's an offshore wind, we might have to go in the odd marina, but yeah, we'll, we'll suck it and see. Anyway, I hope you enjoy watching our films. If you do, please subscribe. Thank you for watching.